Near Pueblo tonight, I-25 is still closed after a coal train derailed onto the interstate, crashing a bridge and killing a driver. This happened on Sunday. Governor Jared Polis will visit the site tomorrow to look at the progress of the cleanup operation. Tonight, investigators say a broken rail caused those 30 cars to derail, forcing the bridge to collapse. Your reporter Alan Janay visited the site of the crash today and has this update. The work will go on 24-7 until the highway is reopened. Cranes have been brought in to hold up the section of the bridge that was ripped down. The governor's office released a statement indicating that it may take 48 hours after the start of debris removal to get the highway reopened. And we're already more than a day into that. From the air, it's clear a lot has been accomplished already. The road cleared of a half dozen rail cars and tons of coal. Far different from the scene after the wreck collapsed the bridge and threw trains onto the highway, killing a truck driver. We knew from the beginning it was going to be a big undertaking. Getting it cleared and assessed is the first step. And now I think they're focusing on that bridge, determining how best to get it off the piers and moved. Investigators say there was a break in the rail line before the train reached the overpass, but don't know what caused the break. The train came off and struck the bridge and it all came tumbling down. There was a lot of weight, a lot of inertia coming um, with a train full of heavy coal and train cars themselves. Meantime, the detour has sent drivers through the quiet town of Penrose. People are adjusting to something far more big city. Traffic jam. 50 is way heavier than it normally is. That's unbearable. I know, right? It takes 10 minutes to get across town, so 15 <laughs> is just too long for me. At Coyote's Coffee Den, business has picked up. It's staying steady like this. Outside, the traffic noise is steady, but it puts this place the locals know well right on the way, which may just make it that much more well known. We are the spot. I'd say we are definitely the spot. <laughs> The NTSB says its investigators will look at why warning systems didn't alert the crew of a break in the track. An expert tells me there's low voltage that runs through the rail lines that can show when a circuit is not complete. Also get to be agreed upon who actually owns this bridge. BNSF says the state, but the state says it has conflicting records on the 65-year-old bridge and it is not yet ready to give a definitive answer. But that won't hold up the reopening of the highway. In Pueblo County, Alan Janay covering Colorado First. Well, CDOT says thousands of drivers usually pass under that bridge there on I-25 every day. We also have a list of other detours outlined on CBSColorado.com. We will also post updates to this investigation there as we get them.